Good day, Church! Welcome to Tacloban Bible Community. And for those who are watching online, welcome to our Tacloban Bible Community Church Online Service. Now, there, there was a story of R.D. Jones which had something to do with a typographical error in a classified section of a small town newspaper and the subsequent disastrous attempts to correct it. You know, things went from bad to worse to horrible. So let me show you um, what the ad says. It says, R.D. Jones has one sewing machine for sale, phone 948-0707 after 7 p.m. and ask for Mrs. Kelly who lives with him cheap. Now, um, that was on Monday. On Tuesday, there was a notice which was released and it says, we regret having erred in R.D. Jones' ad yesterday. It should have read, One sewing machine for sale. Cheap. Phone 949-0707 and ask for Mrs. Kelly who lives with him after 7 p.m. So there was an error again in that um, ad. That's why on Wednesday, it says, R.D. Jones has informed us that he has received several annoying telephone calls because of the error we made in his classified ad yesterday. His ad stands corrected as follows. R.D. Jones has one sewing machine for sale. Cheap. Phone 949-0707 after 7 p.m. and ask for Mrs. Kelly who loves with him. Of course, obviously there was an error again. So on Thursday, it is R.D. Jones himself and nag issue a notice. It says, I, R.D. Jones, have no sewing machine for sale. I smashed it. Don't call 948-0707 as the telephone has been disconnected. I have not been carrying on with Mrs. Kelly until yesterday she was my housekeeper, but she quit. You know, you might laugh at that um, story, but that's why it's a little bit funny um, and also this story is a story of frustrations you know disappointments and nobody really want to disappoint diba? that rd jones was frustrated with the newspaper ads he really had not just a bad day but a bad week for him so um this is something that we can relate from right in our you know uh, week of um, working of working and you know doing a lot of things so the question is when was the last time you really had a bad day? It could be a while ago, before you enter this function room, or before you watch this online service. When things are complicated, and when you worry a lot. You know, in the chapter that we are going to talk about today, the disciples of Jesus Christ are worried. Their hearts are troubled. Why? Because if you look at the previous chapters, Jesus knew that Judas would betray him. You know, the feeling that, you know, the closest, one of the closest persons that you have will, you know, will betray you, your disciple. He knew that he would be arrested. He knew that about the trials, the beatings, the pains that he's going to encounter. He knew that he would die on the cross. You know, considering all this, he tried to prepare the apostles for what they were about to endure. So that's why he begins to comfort them. You know, if you can just observe of, of the previous chapters, Jesus was predicting his death. He has his last supper, his Passover meal with his disciples. Jesus washed the disciples' feet. He was also predicting his betrayal and predicting Peter's denial. You know, the disciples begin to worry about their future because their teacher would be betrayed and killed. You know, the one that they thought would save them from Roman Empire will be handed over to crucifixion. It's really hard to accept. And they would even ask, where are you going? We can come with you. But Jesus said, diba? no, you cannot come right now. So today, we are going to continue in our series looking at the I Am statements of Jesus. In the past Sundays, we have looked at Jesus as the bread of life, the one who satisfies our deepest hunger. And just last week, we talked about Jesus, the resurrection, and the life, the one who helps us in our fears. 
And today, we turn to Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. The one who helps us to trust. That's why my question for us today, that is there anyone of us here, is there anyone watching this online service today, for you, do you need comfort this morning? Do you need encouragement this morning? Because you worry a lot. You know, in our um, situation right now, we have a global pandemic. And there are many uncertainties that TBC members are facing currently. Some of us have lost loved ones to COVID. Some have lost their jobs. Some may still have their job but are receiving less income. Some are afraid that they might get COVID. That they are afraid that their you know, little children... Their parents, their grandparents, relatives might get COVID. Some worry because of an unpredictable future safety and protection for their family. You know, I like the, the, um, what Robert Frost said. Now, the reason why worry kills more people than work is that more people worry than work. Diba? Instead of we working on the solution, we worry a lot. That's why Jesus has answered the question that many are asking today. How can we know the way? How can we not let our hearts be troubled? How can we avoid worrying? That's why today, we are going to answer all these questions by looking at three things that Jesus told his disciples. Our title for today is, I am the way the truth, and the life. So let's open our Bible and read John chapter 14, verses 1 to 7. It says there, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a, prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. But here Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know the way where, where you're going. So how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really knew me, you would, have, you would know my Father as well. From now on, you do not know him and have, um, you do know him and have seen him. Let's pray. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you because even in the midst of chaos, even in the midst of troubles in our life, you are always there for us. Indeed, Lord, we can do nothing without you. In this life, troubles, problems, they are inevitable. But we know, Lord God, that you are always there for us. I pray, Lord, that as we listen from you today, listen from your word, our heart will just be teachable. That, Lord, we will not look at the person talking online or talking in front of us, but we will listen to your word and apply it in our life and be changed to the person that you want us to be. A person that do not have to worry because we, we, we know and we understand that you are the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. You know, there was, I like the, the quote of George Mueller. Mueller. Um, he was a famous person for building and maintaining orphanages through determined prayer rather than by telling people of their needs. He says, the beginning of anxiety is the end of faith. And the beginning of true faith is the end of anxiety. In our verse, um, key verses here in 6 and 7, it says, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. If you really know me, you will know my Father as well. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. That's why in our first point, it says, we do not need to worry because Jesus is the way. Jesus is the way. Jesus Christ pans the infinite distance between God and the sinner. 
it is impossible for a sinful man to manufacture a ladder to climb to God through prayers, tears, penitence, resolutions, rededication, self-help, pop psychology, and many more. This was um, the quote from Will Pounds, the director of missions at Abide in Christ, Hattiesburg, Mississippi, United States. You know, people think that there are many ways to heaven. People think that I can be good and I can go to heaven, but it's not true. It says in our sub-point A, that Jesus is the way to God the Father. In another scripture in Acts 4.12, it says, Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. It's only, it only means that He is the way to God the Father. You know, the point is, Jesus did not leave the door open for any other way. He said, I am the way, and period. Jesus didn't say, I'm one of the ways. Jesus didn't say, I'm one of the many options that you can choose from. Jesus said, I am the way. If you, if you are trusting and anything other than Jesus this morning, you are in a wrong position. And you know, there was a man named Mr. Smith. He was flying from San Francisco to Los Angeles. You know, unexpectedly, the plane stopped in Sacramento along the way. So, of course, the flight attendant explained that there would be a delay. And if the passengers wanted to get off the aircraft, the plane would reboard in 30 minutes. So, of course, what happened is, just imagine, no? Um, what happened is everybody got off the plane except for one gentleman who was blind. Mr. Smith had noticed him as he walked by and could tell that the blind man had flown before because his seeing eye dog, you know, they, we, they, they have this seeing eye dog with them na atul haubos quietly underneath the seats in front of him throughout the entire flight. So, of course, Mr. Smith could also tell he had flown this very flight because, uh, before because the pilot ap approached him and calling him by name said, Keith, we're in Sacramento for almost an hour. Would you like to get off and stretch your legs? Perhaps um, the pilot, pilot would want to assist um, Keith going down uh, from the aircraft. But, you know, Keith replied, um, No, thanks, but... Maybe the dog, my dog, would like to stretch his legs. You know, imagine this. Um, the pilot is wearing sunglasses at that time, and he is carrying with him the dog of Keith. So he's going down from the aircraft. The passengers are looking at him from the gate. Picture this. All the people in the gate area came to a complete quiet standstill when they looked up and saw the pilot walk off the plane with the seeing eye dog. And the pilot was even wearing sunglasses. You know, if you can just imagine, people were scattered. They scattered. They were surprised. They were, you know, going around. They did not just try, try to change planes, but they were trying to change airlines. Why? Because they thought that the pilot was blind. So, divine that story, we can say that true enough that people want a guide they can trust. Of course. Hindi ba naman itmasa kahin aeroplano nga iton pilot is blind. Diba? So, in verses 1 to 4, Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would have I told you that I am going there to prepare a, pl prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I am going. In our sub point B, it says, Jesus is the way to heaven and is preparing a place for us there. He is not just the way to God the Father, but He is also the way to heaven, the only way to heaven. You know, most of the resources that I used in studying this passage points towards the death of Jesus. 
and then his return from death in the resurrection that we just talked about last Sunday. You know, by going to his death throughout his crucifixion, he made it possible for them, for the disciples, to live in the presence of God and also for us. His living that evening was actually for their benefit. And then he did come back for them when he was resurrected from the dead. You know, Jesus is about to face crucifixion and one of the most painful deaths imaginable. And yet his concern here is for his disciples. He tells them to calm their hearts. He is going away to secure their future destiny. And even though he's leaving, he will come back. The truth is, the point is, Jesus is, is not going away to prepare a place for us. He has prepared a place for us in the presence of God, and it's already done. You know, there was a story of Billy, Billy Graham um, when he was telling a story at that time when he was speaking in the city out west. When he arrived in town, he wanted to mail a letter at that time because uh, Billy Graham pa pwede maka-text or calls. He wanted to mail a letter. So he left his hotel to go to the post office. Now, at this time, he went out. He saw a, a young boy standing on the corner. So he asked him for directions to the post office because obviously, Billy Graham doesn't know where the post office was. So the boy just gave him explicit ex directions. Now, Dr. Graham thanked him and said, Do you know who I am? And the boy responded, I don't. He said, well, my name is Billy Graham, and I'm here to speak at one of the churches downtown. Then he said to the boy, if you can come tonight, I will tell you how to get to heaven. Then the boy said, no, thank you. How can you tell me how to get to heaven? I mean, you don't even know how to get to the post office. <laughs> well, that story was just um, an illustration that, you know, of course, the boy was just being philosopher at that time. But, you know, in reality, if you want to know how to get to another particular place, the best person for you to ask is someone who lives there or someone who, have, who had been there. You know, Jesus knows every street in heaven. He built them. He prepared every home there. He created it. He knows the place inside out. So it's, he is very qualified to give directions. He is telling us that he is the way. In John chapter 4, verse 5, it says, Thomas said to him, to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Here, here Thomas and the disciples didn't really understand what he meant. They thought nga, he will just go to another place. But honestly, you know, it's really hard to not be irritated. Hindi nga mga disciples' ignorance. You know, nagpapaka- um, what I clue, diba? But I assume that if we were in their shoes, we wouldn't have understood either. Why? You know, it's really hard. It's a natural thing that we want to know the facts when we don't understand. In this case, Thomas was portrayed as a doubter. That's why he is known as a doubting Thomas. But the truth is, Thomas captures the inner min mental workings of most people of today. You know, we want the facts. We need to understand how everything works. And you know, I think personally, Thomas captures something that we can relate to quite well. To the point that, you know, we doubt. I mean, we don't understand such things, even if it's been explained to us many times by the Word of God. You know, we tend to ask, why me, Lord? Why these problems? You know, I experienced this year nga, um, my wife got, um, you know, manganganak na akong wife this February and that was the time that we have to, you know, as a prerequisite that we have to get a um, swab para haiya and then she was tested positive. And the protocol is in our municipality that you have to be isolated. So there, he was alone, she, she was alone in the isolation facility i was not there to help him to help her to assist here and you know it was I, I worried a lot because i don't know what will happen um of course there was a nurse nurse in that isolation facility but still 
I, I tend to worry a lot. And not just that, nadagdagan pa because during that week, nagkamayadahin grabing yung floods, hapalo. Huwag na-mention ko na namang lugar, hapalo. And it was really, you know, makuri because we have to evacuate. So, um, ako and then my son evacuated here in Tacloban. And again, nag na naman ako. And it's really hard, you know. Um, nakaka-frustrate and kasagsagan pagodad to an akon final exam because I am still I am also studying right now. So, you know, the mental um, you know, challenge, I worry emotions. You cannot think, you know, I cannot think right. <laughs> so, at akon pa toddler is makulit. So, it's really hard. You know, this topic is really I can relate from this topic because um, it, it talks about worry and you know, all of us, we experience worry. iba ba lang a level. That's why Jesus said, you don't have to worry because I am the way, the truth, and the life. In our verse 6, Jesus did not say, Jesus is the way, or I am the way. But he also said, I am the truth. In our point 2, it says, we do not need to worry because Jesus has told us the truth about this world, sin, death, and heaven. You know, if we look back or we look forward ngayon, when Pilate asked Christ at his trial in John 18, 38, what is truth? Little did he know that the truth in person, incarnate, was standing before him. You know, um, since the beginning of time, Satan has been the father of deception, the father of lies, and that continues until today. Adam and Eve believed the lies of Satan in the garden. And men today still believe his lies. You know, one of the biggest lies is the truth. Uh, sorry, one of the biggest lies is that truth is relative. There are no absolutes. Therefore, it doesn't matter what you believe. In doing so, man as in the words of Romans chapter 1, verse 25, it says, you know, they have or man exchanged the truth of God for the lie and worship and serve the creature rather than the creator. We have exchanged the truth for a lie. Jesus said, I am the truth. And that's absolute. You know, the, the word truth is used 22 times in the Gospel of John. And it's, you know, it's being emphasized there because truth is absolute. You know, when you say one plus one, automatically we answer two. Diba? That's the absolute truth. Unless may da kaibang answer. Diba? But the truth is, it will not change. Truth is a representation of things as they are. As such, Jesus is not just some truth, but the entire truth. Jesus Christ is the full revelation of God. He is God's definitive and perfect word expressing who God is and what he's like, who we are, and what we need to do to be saved. Because truth is reality. You know, Muhammad, Confucius, and Buddha all claimed only to be seekers of truth. But you know, here, Christ, Jesus Christ, declared, expressly declared, declared himself as the truth. Because Jesus is truth, we can have confidence that what he says is real, and not just the figment of man's imagination. Truth is truth. It cannot change because it's not by nature subjective. The truth is, Jesus has told us the truth about this world and sin. In Romans 3.23, it says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. This world is not our true home. This world. We are to depart this when we die. Sin, no matter how big or small, is sin. Diba? And you know, one of the biggest challenges that we face, that believers face these days, is that how to stay righteous in a very, very sinful world. The truth is that sin is pleasurable, no matter you know, how much you pretend that it is not. Even, the, you know, even if you have you know, the faith that very strong, nga talaga masarin ka, no, I cannot. Dira ko ito ma, ma-tempt. 
But you know, remember Peter, di ba na kan Jesus? You know, Jesus, I will fight for you. I will die for you. But after that few hours, gindinay niya Jesus, not just once, but three times. It is natural for us, you know, it is great temptation that we face on a daily basis not to fall into sin. Moses, when he came to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You know, that's why in our sub point B it says, Jesus has told us the truth about death. In Romans 6.23, For the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. If you can see the statistics way back 2017, nearly 150,000 people die each day. Each day, around the world. You know, just last week, one of my uncles died. You know, the truth is, when a person dies, he will live forever. Question is, where? Heaven? Or hell. The difference is their relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, I have this question for us. Why do Christians still, still struggle in life? Why do we still endure pain and heartache? The answer is because this life is not the point. This life is not our ultimate goal and does not encompass the entirety of who we are. This life is a mere drop in the ocean of eternity and serves as the starting block on the marathon that leads us to our goal of eternal life. We can slow it down, we can spend time, money, we can spend time, money, and energy working to fight against it. But you know, we can stop, we can stop it from marching forward. That's why Jesus told us the truth that death is not the end for the believers. It's just the beginning of eternal life. In our point, sub point C, it says, Jesus has told us the truth about forgiveness, salvation, and heaven. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins in accordance with the riches of God's grace. You know, um, let's just, you know, imagine, suppose you are traveling in an unfamiliar place with your wife who is injured in a way that is life-threatening. You know, that if you do not go, I mean, if you do not get her to the hospital in a short time, she will die. There was no, there is no rescue unit. You think you are heading for a city where there will be a hospital, but you're not sure. In reality, you are lost. You and your wife are lost. You don't know if that road will be, you know, if that road will take you to hospital or not. Meanwhile, your wife is getting weaker and weaker. And eventually, you see someone outside their home and you stop to ask them. And you stop to ask them this directions to the nearest hospital. And they tell you, um, you go to uh, three miles and take the next turn to the right. So you do, of course, because you were very desperate. Now, as you travel along that road, it becomes, you know, more and more narrow. So after a while, the road turns into a dirt road, and you realize that the person who gave you the directions lied to you. And this is not the way to the hospital. And then finally, you see a sign that says, dead end. So you turn around. By now, your wife has passed out and is non-responsive, but still breathing. Finally, you stumble across a place that appears to be a hospital and you rush into the emergency room carrying your wife. There's a person there who appears to be a doctor. Now, the doctor gives her a shot. <coughs> and it looks like she stops breathing. So the doctor tells you that he will need to take your wife into an exam room. But you cannot follow. So as he opens the door to wheel her into the exam room and you look into, you, you look in, but instead of an exam room, you see an embalming room and caskets. But at this point, there is nothing that you can do. It's too late. Your wife is dead. She could have lived, but you didn't know the way. Sought the truth, 
but you you were lied in you were lied to and the person who was to save her life took it you know that story can relate uh, relates here in our topic now jesus statement in verse 6 you know he did not just claim that he is the way but he is also the truth even though we have problems you know we are blessed and happy because the truth is jesus is in us and he is the truth we will never worry that we will be deceived and be imprisoned by sin anymore we have god's word and the truth is the truth is in god's word you know what the, the one that i mentioned a while ago about my story uh, we experience a lot of challenges with my family you know what encourages me aside from those people who have been you know uh, messaging me encouraging me is the word of god the word of god is truth and it you know nakaka encourage here nga bisan you know the only thing that that you want to do is to give up but the word of god speaks nga it's alive it's the truth so in our verse key verse in verse 6 jesus said not just he he did not just claim that he is the way he is the truth but he is also the life and that no one comes to the father except through him that's why in our point three it says we do not need to worry because knowing jesus brings true life knowing jesus you know when you know jesus intimately when you have a relationship with him ito knowing adiri la kay jesus okay i know him he is the son of god he became man and he's, he he was crucified on the cross you know not just that nga klase of knowing but an intimate knowing that leads into a relationship with him that's why in our sub point a it says true life and happiness do not come from wealth in our um in our passage here in um verse one now you can he jesus do not let your hearts be troubled trust in god trust also in me wealth does not bring security and joy but god does jesus is saying i know you trust god but you can trust me as well remember even when you can no longer see me don't stop trusting in me all of us seem to have much easier time trusting in things that we can see and touch diba? it is the things that we cannot see often that we have the hardest time trusting in you know just like the story of of uh, thomas in john chapter 20 <coughs> verses um, 24 to 29 it says here now thomas one of the twelve was not with the disciples when jesus came so the other disciples told him we have seen the lord but he said to them unless i see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and pu- and put my hand into his side i will not believe it a week later his disciples were in the house again and, the, and thomas was with them though the doors were locked jesus came and stood among them and said peace be with you then he said to thomas put your finger here see my hands reach out your hand and put it to, into my side stop doubting and believe thomas said to him my lord and my god then jesus told him because you have seen me you have believed blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed you know the bible teaches us that the things we can see are only temporary you know na thomas it ia it ia um, motto is to see is to believe diba? and same also with us it includes you know things that we can see such as wealth all of it will one day be gone the car in which you rode to church today is just temporary this building the chairs on which you are sitting comfortably all are temporary all are subject to decay all of this will someday be gone we need to learn to trust even when we do not see the substance of our faith that's why in our sub point b it says true life and happiness do not come from our job or status in life 
in this global pandemic, we experience ng aton job nawara or an aton job, I mean, aton income is nagless because we do not have to report to work every day. And our, you know, company that we were we are working on is may da um, naapektuhan of this pandemic. But you know, the Bible is teaching us that it's okay. I mean, it's not okay, but we can still be happy. We can still have a true life. So in 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 9 to 10, it says, People who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. The point is, our work, our job is God's blessing for us. And we really appreciate it. You know, in fact, we are to work so that we have something to eat and provide for our family. But we cannot put all our time to it, you know, our life to it, making it our topmost priority and happiness. Our job is just God's way of providing for us. We cannot focus on the, go on the job and forget who provided it. Focus on our relationship with God. And one of the ways that we can do that is we share Jesus to our office mates, diba? We are not content that, you know, Adalahira, they do not know uh, how to get to heaven when they die. We have to share Jesus to them as well. And our sub-point C boils down to what I want to emphasize, that true life and happiness come from having a relationship with Jesus. And not just relationship, but also living God's way. In Psalm chapter 144, verse 15, it says, Blessed is the people of whom this is true. Blessed is the people whose God is the Lord. In Psalm 16, 11, You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures at your right hand. You know, having a relationship with Jesus, just like any other relationship, it will grow if properly cultivated and nourished. You know, we read the Word of God because we want to know what God wants for us in this life, not our wants. Hence, our life would be more meaningful because we are doing what we are called to do or living the purpose for which we were created. And that is something uh, satisfying, you know? Even though in, the, in life's in this life, problems will always come. Diba? Hino ba ito waray problema? Nga tanan, may da mga problems. You know, it becomes, the na it's natural ha aton life. However, these are just temporary. We look forward to what is ahead. We look forward to what is eternal. We do not have to work for God's blessings. We are blessed because we belong to Him. The point is, if we understand this principle, we will understand why our response to troubles, to worries, can be changed. Jesus actually never asked his father what he could do to be blessed. God just blessed him because of his relationship with him. He was his son. Now, let me ask you this question. For those who have, you know, children, for those who may mga anak, what do your kids need to do in order for you to bless them, to give them food, to give them, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Do they have to do something else first? Have you ever brought your child a gift without there being a special occasion? Have you ever brought him home ice cream or anything or gift or toys for your children? Do you do this because uh, they did good or they did something for you? Of course not. You know, we bless our children because of their relationship with us. They are our children, of course. They are our, and you know, we will do whatever it takes to ensure they have everything they need, even the things that they want. God is the same way. 
He blesses us because of our relationship with Him through Jesus Christ. We cannot work for the blessing. So, you know, therefore, we cannot earn it. It is a gift from God, just as we do with our children on a daily basis. You know, as I end this sermon today, we cannot choose not, we can choose not to have our hearts troubled. Of course, it's a natural way to worry, but we can choose not to worry. There are some things that will bother us no matter how strong our faith is. You know, but the strength comes in how we respond to the situation. Jesus asked us to allow our hearts, not to allow our hearts be troubled, but to believe in God and to believe in Him. He reminds us that life on earth is temporary and He has prepared a place for us that will exist throughout all of eternity. If we see this life here as temporary and our true life starting once we enter into God's presence, we can start changing our responses to everyday situations. This does not mean that we stop caring or living or magin manhid na lang kita. No. It just means that our responses are different. At the end of the day, we know that the, the truth and the truth will set us free. We know that Jesus is the truth because He is real. This can only happen if our life is deeply rooted in our relationship with God. You know, there are two types of persons that I'm going to challenge today. If Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, as He said He was, then there are two responses that we have to make. For the person nga maeda na relationship with Jesus Christ, I mean, for those nga waray pa ngayon, let's start first for those nga mga people nga waray pa, we'll have to decide if we are going to trust Jesus today as our path to the Father, both now and eternally. We have to trust Him. We have to give our 100% trust haiya. And for those nga may na relationship kan Jesus Christ, if Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, we have a responsibility to help others to have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Lord, indeed, things here on earth are just temporary. We will only live here temporarily. All things that we can see, we can touch, we can have, all good or bad things, Lord, they will pass away. But your word will remain. Our relationship with you will continue. And help us that starting today, Lord, we will not trust haamon kalugaringon nga strategy in life. Haamon kalugaringon nga confidence, Lord God. You know, things nga um, we can see here on earth. Help us, Lord God, to put our 100% trust in the good life. Lord, we do not know the way. We do not know nga what can we do when we are worrying. But because of your word today, Lord, we, were, we learned something. Nga it's only you, Lord God, who can change us, who can Give us solutions to our problems, Lord. And we will just give all these things to you for your honor and for your glory. Thank you, Lord, for everything. This I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.